coming over to vaccine sensitivity you can see this beautiful chart so as you move towards the right beta the vaccine freeze sensitivity the vaccine freeze sensitivity will increase okay and as you move towards the top side the heat sensitivity will increase my question to you is which is the most freeze sensitive vaccine which is the most freeze sensitive vaccine and on the other hand which is the most heat sensitive vaccine so if you just look at this list we have already made for you guys so which is the most heat sensitive vaccine the most heat sensitive vaccine is opv please note this is an exception that bcg only after reconstitution becomes the most heat sensitive in your mcq exam if reconstituted bcg we write it as rbcg if RBCG is written, you mark that answer. If that is not written, don't get confused that, sir. Padani Merko Laga BCG was the correct answer. Wrong. BCG is way behind. BCG, can you see before constitution? It is way behind. So reconstituted BCG is the most heat sensitive. After that, usually in your MCQ exams, beta, you'll get the answer as OPV. So OPV followed by IPV, followed by measles rubella, rotavirus, JE. That's how you need to remember. In very simple words, remember the Prime Minister vaccines. So OPV. Followed by measles rubella, IPV, they are the most heat sensitive vaccine. Most freeze sensitive vaccine, most freeze sensitive vaccine is hepatitis B, followed by pentavalent, followed by IPV. It is also said that IPV, IPV beta, it is also said that IPV is more freeze sensitive than heat sensitive. It is more freeze sensitive compared to heat sensitive, but it is said that IPV is both heat and freeze sensitive. It is both. This is the one thing that you see common, right? Am I correct? Can you see IPV is here and IPV is here, but it is considered to be more freeze sensitive than heat sensitive. If you just look at this graph also, it is more towards the freeze sensitivity than the heat sensitivity. So it is considered to be more freeze sensitive and uh, lesser heat sensitive in terms of comparing both. So just for your summary for your exam, you can remember that which are the heat sensitive and which are the freeze sensitive vaccine. The heat sensitive, the most heat sensitive vaccine is OPV. If you get reconstituted BCG, then that becomes as your best answer. But otherwise, generally speaking, it will be reconstituted. It will be OPV. OPV followed by measles rubella or IPV followed by rota followed by J. Freeze sensitive vaccine the most freeze sensitive has already been asked couple of times it is hepatitis b followed by penta followed by ip it also you should know that which vaccine is not a freeze sensitive not heat sensitive usually kept in the center the heart of ilr you remember the heart of the ilr is the tt vaccine or the td vaccine so that's what you need to remember for your exams this point we have already covered that in the outreach session how do you take care of your vaccine so in the outreach session when the anm or the uh, or the asha worker is going along with the vaccinator or or the healthcare worker is going how do you place the vaccine please note that the vaccine are always placed on the ice pack these are the heat sensitive vaccines. So which are the heat sensitive? The Japanese encephalitis, measles rubella inserted inside the ice pack. The rotavirus vaccine that is also heat sensitive. It is on the ice pack. The BCG is inserted within that hole of the ice pack and the OPV is also on the ice pack. Please note which vaccines will never be put on the ice pack. That is IPV, TT vaccine, DPT vaccine, pentavalent and PCV vaccine. They are never put on the ice pack. They are never put on the ice pack. So next topic, third topic is about the vaccine vial monitor. What is this vaccine vial monitor? Vaccine vial monitor is given by outer circle and inner square. It is given by outer circle and inner square. Inner square. Now there is a chemical in indicator, there is a chemical indicator in the square. The vaccine vial monitor, it tells us about the heat sensitivity of vaccine. It tells us about the heat sensitivity of the vaccine in terms of that is the vaccine potent, yes or no, has it been spoiled by excess temperatures or heat. So all the vaccines which are heat sensitive, they will definitely have the vaccine vial monitor. As the temperature will increase beta, who will change the color, the circle or the square? As the temperature increases, as temperature increases, the square is going to change color. The square will change color. So now you can see over here, generally speaking, the inner square is light in color. 
than the outer circle and dark is the outer circle. This is a normal phenomena. Now in this, you can see that the inner circle is inner square is light and the outer circle is dark. Then the square becomes slightly more dark, but still it is lesser than the circle. Next is the same color. When the square and the circle will become the same color when they become the same color at the same color please note beta we have is the discard point it is called as the discard point at this point we say that the vaccine is not usable and then it could also be darker color the square could have darker color and if the square has darker color we say it is absolutely discarded so in your mcq exam most of the time they'll ask you like uh, visual uh, there's a visual mcq where you'll have to decide whether the square is lighter than the circle or darker than the circle if it is same color or darker the vaccine is not working so the vaccine while monitors we can have different types of the vaccine while monitors we can have vvm 30 vvm 14 vvm 7 vvm 2 so it all depends on which vvm we are taking 2 and 7 is usually taken for most heat sensitive vaccines and usually 30 and 14 is taken for the least heat sensitive vaccine it tells you that in how many days that is 30 days 14 days 7 days or 2 days will the vaccine get spoiled so if the temperature is more than x number if the temperature is more than 10 degrees or 20 degrees the vaccine will get spoiled in 2 days or 7 days or 14 or 30 that's what the vvm means generally it uh, different vvms are used on different vaccines so for example for opv vaccine or the measles rubella vaccine we generally use the uh, the vvm2 or the vvm7 but for vaccines which are least uh, heat sensitive like the TD vaccines or the IP vaccines we take the VVM 30s or the VVM 14s so these are different types of the vaccine while monitors next in line you should also know what are the shake tests what do you mean by a shake test beta shake test is when you shake a vaccine the shake test is done for freeze sensitive vaccine shake test is done for freeze sensitive vaccine so for heat sensitive you need a vaccine while monitor for free sensitive you do a shake test so what we do in a shake test is we uh, let us say i have this vaccine and this needs to be tested whether it is freeze sensitive freeze destroyed yes or no so what i do is i take my test vaccine and then i have to already have a control vaccine so what is a control vaccine beta control vaccine is a vaccine which you have already destroyed by freezing so control vaccine is already frozen vaccine it is already frozen vaccine so now this already frozen vaccine is taken out and the test vaccine that you want to test you take that now you shake these both how will you shake it you never shake it like this because if you shake like this the vaccinator may throw the vaccine so country india poor country if you throw 10 percent of the vaccine that's a huge loss so we ask them to shake the vaccine that's how we shake the vaccine so you shake the vaccine the test vaccine and you shake the control vaccine once you shake the the vaccine which was frozen and thawed and the vaccine which was never frozen this is called as the test vaccine and the vaccine which is called as the controlled vaccine because that was frozen and thawed so once you shake it and then you let it stay for 20 to 30 minutes once you let it stay for 20 to 30 minutes then in case there is a clear liquid on the top that automatically means that the particles are already frozen and they are like uh, they have settled down there is thick sediment downside this vaccine in case there is clear fluid on the top that means the vaccine is vaccine is not potent that means this vaccine is not potent however if you see no sediment it is a cloudy liquid it is a white color cloudy liquid we say that the vaccine is okay to be used now point for you to know is that in what situations the point for us to know is that in what situations we will use the shake test or what is the principle of shake test Please note it is done for free sensitive vaccine and free sensitive there is uh, an adjuvant. What do you mean by adjuvant? Adjuvant means it is any immuno booster. It is any immuno booster. So for the same adjuvant, what does it actually mean? Does it immune boost? No. 
it it adjuvant the role is in real sense i'm telling you the role is that you are not supposed to give this much vaccine you give this much vaccine and with this much vaccine you add little bit adjuvant so that the effect and the side effect of the vaccine is not there in the person so you decrease the dose of the vaccine and you add adjuvant to achieve the same effect in the person which you would have achieved by higher dose of vaccine did you get it that means let us say you were supposed to prevent a disease or to make antibodies in you i had to give this much vaccine now what i do is chemically this is all chemical i decrease the dose of the vaccine because it cause it may cause side effect i give extra adjuvant so adjuvant is used to achieve the same amount of effect which a higher dose would have taken and that's what is the role of adjuvant now what adjuvant in is used in dpt and hepatitis b in dpt or hepatitis b these both are free sensitive vaccine now the adjuvant we use is aluminium hydroxide now the aluminium hydroxide beta it may it may precipitate it may precipitate or it may sediment upon freezing that is the problem and therefore whenever we are going to give the vaccine you have to ensure that the aluminium hydroxide has not precipitated if it has precipitated that means you're giving a vaccine without aluminium hydroxide so you better give water so that means the vaccine becomes non-potent na nah? so you have to check whether the aluminium hydroxide is still working in the vaccine yes or no how do you check that you check it by shake test the normal color of the vaccine the normal color of the dpt vaccine that is a white amorphous cloudy liquid it is a white amorphous liquid and because it is white amorphous liquid it should remain as white amorphous liquid now moving on to the next point what do we mean by the open vial policy what is this open vial policy beta uh, if you just look at what is open vial policy it may be sometimes confusing to many it is confusing to me as well open vial policy what is open vial policy that all the vaccines all the vaccines can be used all the vaccines all all means everyone so all the vaccines can be used till how much time till 28 days beta they can be used till 28 days after opening except which one except only two answers that is bcg and measles vaccine or the measles and rubella vaccine in earlier times we also had the j vaccine and the rotavirus vaccine as a part of this uh, uh, this regime but now please note earlier j and the rotavirus vaccine they were not a part of open vial policy now they are part so now they are no more the answers which of the vaccine does not uh, does not follow open vial policy only two answers that is bcg and measles rubella Please note, we have already discussed on them that earlier we had this Rotavac, the Rotavirus vaccine, the Rotavirus vaccine or the Rotavac vaccine, it had the vaccine vial monitor on the cap. But now the vaccine vial monitor, it is on the body which makes it now applicable as the open vial policy that means once you open it the vvm is still intact and you can use it till 28 days similarly the japanese encephalitis vaccine please note earlier we were using the live vaccine wherever the states are using still the live vaccine the open vial policy is still not applicable because on live vaccine you once you reconstitute a live vaccine it should be used within four to six hours but please note that most of the country has moved over from japanese encephalitis live vaccine to a japanese encephalitis killed vaccine and in the killed vaccine please note open vial policy is applicable once you open this j vaccine you can use it for 28 days that is what is open vial policy mm -hmm.